There also will be some good jobs in HUD, in transportation, in health, in the Farmer's Home Administration, and in soil conservation. Just goes to show you that the American dream is not dead. That's my opinion. I'm Dave Nightdemon. Dave is always prepared for anything there, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like all the best reporters. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching tonight. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. Way 3 News at 6 with Jim Mitchell and Jackie Hayes. Louisville's best anchors is voted by the readers of Louisville Magazine. A legal showdown over the explosive issue of gays in the military. A new study shows an expensive and complicated heart procedure is overused. And on America Close Up, older workers fighting back age discrimination. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Reporting tonight from NBC News headquarters in New York. Good evening. Bill Clinton is learning just one week after his election that as president, the problems just keep on coming. Tonight, it's gays in the military, an issue that will have to be resolved on his watch. A federal judge in Los Angeles late today ruled the military ban on gays is unconstitutional. Now, this case involves a Northern California sailor who was not allowed back on his base despite a court order. Our Pentagon correspondent, Fred Francis, is with us tonight on this controversial issue. And, Fred, there is late word tonight. The Pentagon says it will reinstate at least this sailor. But what about for the long haul? Well, Tom, the Pentagon will salute and accept a smaller military under Bill Clinton, but it will not accept homosexuals without a fight. Right, right. The case of Keith Meinhold, a Navy sonar expert on hunting submarines, is proof of the Pentagon's intransigence. Meinhold admitted he was gay and got kicked out. He told today's Katie Couric he couldn't live in fear. I was tired of having to look over my shoulder, afraid that uh, at any time somebody could accuse me of being gay, whether or not they uh, had any evidence of it. Last Friday, a federal court ordered him reinstated. Yesterday, the Navy refused. The Navy, along with the other services, says that gays are disruptive to good order and discipline on ships and in the ranks. The services ignore the opinion of many that of two million men and women in uniform, one in ten may be gay. The Navy and the administration say GIs deserve privacy in such close quarters. Meinhold says that's nonsense, not a reason to kick someone out. They're supposed to follow the orders of the court, and now we have a, a much bigger problem than allowing gays and lesbians in the military, I would say. The Meinhold case highlights what could be President-elect Clinton's most difficult social issue. He has promised to order the ban on gays drop once he's in the White House. It seemed to me elemental that if a person, a man or woman, wanted to serve their country, they ought to be able to do it. But military leaders like General Colin Powell believe that sentiment against gays is so strong that Clinton's promise will cause an uproar and wholesale resignations. Even Clinton advisor, retired Joint Chiefs Chairman William Crow says he'll try to change Clinton's mind. But gays who overwhelmingly supported Clinton say a promise is a promise. Oh, I think he has demonstrated his support for gay and lesbian rights, and we believe that he will overturn the military ban um, soon after he takes office. Nations like Israel and Holland accept gays in their ranks with all about the angst that's predicted here, Tom. And Fred, what about the business of now the Pentagon saying that he can be reinstated, the judge saying that it is likely that he could prove all of this is unconstitutional? Well, first of all, the Pentagon has to do it for one day or two days until it can get to a higher court. Traditionally, the federal courts have stayed out of the Pentagon's business here. They've always said that this is a sensitive area, a different area of American culture, and they've let the Pentagon decide these things. But all this can change in January with a stroke of a pen by Bill Clinton, so the Pentagon knows it's fighting a losing battle. All right, thank you very much, Fred Francis, tonight. Also today, Assistant Secretary of State Elizabeth Tamposi was fired. She was the official who supervised the campaign search of Bill Clinton's passport files and those of his mother. The State Department today refused comment on new reports that Ross Perot's file also was rifled. Tamposi's dismissal was described as a good step at the Clinton transition offices in Little Rock, but today the president-elect and his aides were much more concerned with a growing number of pressing international developments. 
NBC's Andrea Mitchell tonight is in Little Rock once again. Andrea? Tom, Bill Clinton continues to work on the complicated task of turning a political organization into a government. Before meeting with transition advisors, Clinton got some exercise and a reminder of the job ahead. He's not governor no more. He's president. Yes, I won't we'll be president until January the 20th. Some things won't wait. Clinton talked today to four more foreign leaders, including President Mubarak of Egypt and King Fahd of Saudi Arabia. And he shared King Fahd's concern about the policy of new hostile powers in the Gulf region. Uh, intend, and he intends to work closely with him to ensure that the peace process continues to go forward. The nation's mayors meeting in Atlanta want to talk with Clinton about in urban problems. That, we believe there needs to be a meeting directly with and privately with the mayors of this country. In Geneva, urgent efforts to avoid a trade war with Europe went nowhere. And Clinton has to pick his cabinet, write a budget, and decide on his legislative priorities. Al Gore remains on hand to take part in every decision. All I can tell you is it's going extremely well. The top campaign aides will likely work in the transition and then move to key White House jobs. To guard against conflicts of interest, Clinton has promised the toughest ethics rules ever imposed on transition or administration appointees. They would be banned from lobbying government agencies for five years after leaving office. It's a very important step. It sends an immediate message to the country and to this city, Washington, D.C., that things are not going to be business as usual. It's certainly not business as usual in Little Rock. Clinton's neighbors are now experiencing the full Washington treatment. 92-year-old neighbor Grace Chapman isn't phased at all. Even if you hadn't been through it, she knew it was going to be this way. No, we don't mind. Further transition appointments may come later this week. Cabinet decisions will take longer. Tom? Thank you, Andrea. Now let's go to Washington and NBC's Odetta Rogers, who will be covering Congress for us. And Odetta is already taking shape, this new Congress. Tom, the new Congress looks more like America than any other Congress in history. So help you God. I will. This is one of the new faces changing the look. California Senator Dianne Feinstein, the first of the Senate newcomers to take the oath of office, and one of six women senators, three times as many as before. I think it can be a kind of signal year in terms of achieving some things that um, uh, can give people a sense of confidence that their government is serving them once again. I'd like to be a voice for working people, a voice for everyday citizens who have to live normal lives, uh, to bring that perspective and that outlook to uh, this institution. This afternoon, some of the new women met for what they call the Power Workshop in the hopes of having their agenda ready for action when Congress resumes in January. And they could have the support from their sisters in the U.S. House of Representatives, where there are 24 newly elected women. Indeed, the new Congress has more women and minorities than ever before, with 54 women in the House and Senate, 40 African Americans, 19 Hispanics, 9 Asians and Pacific Islanders, and one American Indian, Senator Ben Nighthorse Campbell, who will wear his ethnic bolo instead of the traditional necktie. I looked in the rule book. It, uh, it just said that uh, there's a dress code of coat and tie, but it didn't describe what is the coat or a tie. And there will be other changes around here. The traditional restroom for the male senators only will be converted to accommodate both males and females. The women didn't have one of their own before and had to use a public restroom on another floor. The new senators are hoping to get their committee assignments today, but they'll have to wait for a runoff election in Georgia and an election to fill a vacancy in North Dakota. Tom. Thanks, Odetta. When Nightly News continues in a moment, public access television. Is it in the public interest to show kids how to commit suicide? This man's incredibly close, comfortable shave comes from the Norelco razor. But to see how he got it, we must go back. Back to when he began shaving. Not just above the skin, but below it. Here, our lift and cut system lifts the hair so when it's cut, it can drop below skin level without the blades touching your face. Try it, and you'll keep going back. Back to Norelco for a perfect shave. Norelco. We make close, comfortable. What do you smell? I smell nothing. It's almost like you're working to breathe. For fast relief, try Dristan 12-hour nasal spray. Now smell. Orange, yeah. Tristan nasal spray. Worked very fast. <laughs> Tristan, the face of relief today. What if you could get the fiber you need for regularity in a crisp, delicious wafer? 
Well, now you can. Metamucil wafers. All the effectiveness of Metamucil. And it tastes like a cookie. Metamucil wafers. New controversy tonight over runaway health care costs, this time focusing on heart patients. Every year, more than a million Americans get angiograms. The average cost, $5,000 each. A new study, however, concludes half those procedures may be a waste of money. NBC Science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Angiograms are often the first step in a chain of expensive medical care. And the latest study concludes they often are not necessary. Any health care reform will have to have a method of cutting down on unnecessary procedures. No one has yet figured out how that will work. Robert Bazell, NBC News, New York. In San Antonio, the controversy involves cable television. At issue here is a program that once taught how to make an acid bomb. Well, now it offers helpful hints for would-be suicides. NBC's Jim Cummins has more tonight. Dave Light has produced more than a hundred home videos for the public access channel on cable TV in San Antonio. They are provocative. Today's story is about suicide. Boys and girls, are you serious about suicide? He calls it the worst show, and his latest video instructs teenagers on how to commit suicide in graphic detail. First off, don't just get into mom's valium and take like six or seven. Take like 60 or 70. Now you're serious about it. It doesn't concern you that somebody might take that seriously. I don't see how they could. I, I, I don't know how I could have made it more absurd. But San Antonio city officials are horrified. This is beyond the bounds of free speech. This is a question of public safety, and in this case, a very tragic case of individual safety for these teenagers at risk. The problem is, cable companies, including the one in San Antonio, have virtually no control over what goes on the public access channel. The ACLU says it's a First Amendment issue. The, the, the show may have been disgusting, it may have been uh, despicable, uh, but it's also protected. The cable company has tried burying light show at 3 o'clock in the morning every two weeks. But the teenagers know about it, and they are sharply divided over the controversy. What if somebody saw that show, and after that show they killed themselves? They have to take the responsibility of murder, because that's what they did. They murdered someone. If you don't want to watch something, you don't have to watch it. You turn, you turn the TV off or you change the channel. Light's motivation? The stuff that I put together is amusing to me. It's... Um, if people out there like it, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. There's nobody holding a gun to their heads making them watch it. We don't need adults encouraging young people to kill themselves and then showing them how to do it and making certain that it's, uh, it's effective. But for now, nobody can cancel Dave Light's provocative program. Jim Cummins, NBC News, San Antonio. Rockstar Axel Rose of Guns N' Roses was found guilty by a St. Louis court today of property damage and assault. It stemmed from this 1991 concert. Rose charged the crowd after complaining of black security and then walked off, canceling part of his show. Well, part of the crowd rioted. Rose, not in court today, was fined $50,000 and given two years probation. Security, I'm going home. In tests, people who took Unison fell asleep 23 minutes faster than those who didn't. You can't buy a more effective sleep aid without a prescription. Take Unisom and fall asleep faster. Nighttime, one of the worst times for pain. Minor arthritis pain, muscle aches, pain that seems to go on. That's why you need Ultra Strength Bengay, the strongest Bengay ever. You can say goodnight to your pain with Ultra Strength Bengay. <laughs> vegetables in it. You can actually taste the vegetables, you know, you can get your tomatoes, spinach, celery, carrots, it's zippy, kind of thing, a zippy thing. Sweet, succulent, sunsweet, pleasant like pitted prunes, sweet, sunsweet, succulent, sweet, su succulent, sunsweet, pleasant, pleasant like pitted prunes, they're so much easier to eat. Can we try it again? Keep going. The Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Two flexible screens let you shave whiskers below skin level. It's quick, smooth, comfortable. A great value. The Remington Microscreen. It's a very sophisticated system. You're probably better off taking it to the GM dealership. We haven't got that kind of equipment here. Best bet's the dealership. 
Pretty tricky stuff out of our league. Sorry, try the dealership. The dealership? The GM dealership. America close up tonight. Jobs. Bill Clinton has promised to create more jobs, but for many older workers, that could come too late. After a lifetime of work, some are getting not the gold watch, but the boot. And now they're striking back in court. NBC's Robin Lloyd talked with some of these workers beginning tonight in Los Angeles. It was a senior draftsman in some job in Burbank. Frank Vinci is mm -hmm. over 55 yeah. and out of work. He still can't forget being laid off from the job he held for 24 years. Oh, I'm very bitter. I am still very bitter. So is Pennsylvania accountant Paul Nickel, age 56. He was let go by his company 18 months ago after 17 years of service. If I dwell on that, that makes me angry and that makes me upset and that makes me frustrated. And to a certain extent, I want to strike back. Striking back is what more and more laid-off older workers like Nickel and Vinci are doing. They believe they were targeted because of their age. We're not about to tell you that age bias is a puff of smoke or that you're imagining it. More and more claims of age discrimination are being heard everywhere, from job counseling centers to unemployment lines to union rallies. More and more older people who've been laid off are filing lawsuits against their companies or did and they took that all away from me robin lloyd nbc news hamilton ohio i'll be back in a moment with more news and john chancellor will be here with his commentary tonight you've been dieting with a very special day in mind which could mean you're not getting your daily amount of protein because many foods that provide protein are also high in fat but not this one kellogg's special k that's fat-free and a good source of protein. So make Special K part of your future plans and get into that dress you've been dying to wear. Kellogg's Special K. Get the protein, lose the fat. I have to admit, I'm a little surprised. About what? I just never thought I'd see on anything but a BMW or a Lexus. Me neither. Airbag? Leather? This is quality. About 10, 15,000 less than a BMW or Lexus. I think it feels just as good. <laughs> what? Oh, there's Pontiac Bonneville. It's amazing. When Jeffrey catches a cold, we see the pediatrician. I love my pediatrician. He's my dad. He recommends Dimetap Elixir. Doctors have recommended the Dimetap brand over 200 million times. It relieves sneezing, nasal congestion, runny noses. And Jeffrey really likes the great taste. Doctors recommend Dimetap for their families and yours. Now get the great taste of Dimetap Elixir in new Dimetap chewable tablets. I use a shampoo for dandruff, but my scalp still itches like crazy. You need Scalpacin, the revolutionary scalp medicine for deep scalp itch, not ordinary dandruff. Scalpacin is not a shampoo. It's a clear liquid you don't wash away like shampoo. Apply Scalpacin anytime for deep scalp itch relief with medicine chosen by doctors over all these dandruff shampoo formulas. Scalpacin penetrates to relieve the itch and help prevent flaking. The itch is gone. Scalpacin, the scalp medicine for deep scalp itch. Here's a quick check now of some of today's other news. Off the bench, New York State's top judge, Saul Wachler, has resigned following charges that he blackmailed his former lover. A federal court placed him under house arrest. In Colorado, early winter wonderland. In fact, one of the earliest ski seasons ever. Seven resorts already open, up to six feet of snow, and another 12 inches expected tonight. He played many roles, but he's probably best remembered for this one, the Rifleman. Chuck Connors, dead from lung cancer at the age of 71 in Los Angeles. And now for commentary, John Chancellor taking a look at the trade war that may not be. John? Tom, my guess is there will not be a world trade war as a result of the fight going on now between the United States and Europe. There have been two hearings on this dispute under GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. The European community lost both times. If Europe continues to defy these rulings, it could destroy the whole system of policing commerce under the GATT agreements. That would be a return to the Stone Age of world trade. 
If there is a global trade war, it would kill the next big agreement on international trade. That agreement is worth $100 billion in new business to more than 100 countries. A world trade war would dry up all that new business and dump everybody into a huge recession. A big trade war would make the world a lot more dangerous. It would hurt the rich countries, but it would devastate the poor ones. Poor countries took an economic beating in the 1980s. A wave of protectionism in the 90s would lead to wars in Africa and dictators in Latin America. People in Eastern Europe are in bad economic trouble. Going deeper in the hole would make them hate each other even more than they do now. Democracy would be much harder to achieve. There would be more economic disasters in Russia. Things have changed in the last few years. The Cold War is over. Money talks louder than anything else these days, and that's why there won't be a trade war. There's too much money at stake. Tom? Thank you, John. Speaking of money on Wall Street today, stock prices were down in very heavy trading. <laughs> Presto Salad Shooter Slicer Shredder. Easier than a food processor. Just point and shoot slices right onto a salad. Shoot shreds right onto a pizza. Top a dessert. Go a little nutty. Clean up easy. Dishwasher safe. Small enough to store anywhere. Salad, salad, salad the original salad shooter and professional salad shooter from Presto. 1 a.m. Still awake. Your fever's worse. The coughing and congestion just keep you awake. This flu you handled today now feels out of control. You've got the night flu and you need maximum relief. Theraflu introduces new Maximum Strength Nighttime, the strongest hot liquid formula ever made. It relieves your worst flu symptoms so you can get the sleep you desperately need. New Maximum Strength Nighttime from Theraflu. Maximum flu relief so you can sleep. My granny spaghetti recipe. <gasps> With ordinary grated topping? Oops. Some are one-third fats and fillers. But Kraft is 100% grated Parmesan for 100% great taste. Granny would approve. After examining, testing, it's a fact. You can buy new Preparation H hydrocortisone cream with the maximum strength available without a prescription to relieve problem itch. New Preparation H hydrocortisone cream. Prescription strength without a prescription. Mmm, a late night snack. And no bag keeps it fresher than Ziploc brand storage bag with the gripper zipper. Tough, tiny keys you can feel gripping so you know freshness is locked in. Honey. Caught red-handed. There's only one Ziploc. Gas pressure means pain and bloating. And the way doctors see it, your best choice for relief is my Lanta gas. It has the best medicine for gas. It was 10 years ago that the Vietnam War Memorial was dedicated, and tomorrow, of course, is Veterans Day, a national holiday. In some families, every day is Veterans Day, especially in those families missing a son, a father, a husband, or a daughter, or a wife. NBC's national correspondent Bob Kerr tonight on a special ceremony this year at the Wall. Dennis Dwayne Mathis, Carrie Paul Queen, Robert Charles Smith. It started Sunday, and by tomorrow morning, all 58,183 names memorialized on the polished black granite wall will have been read. For many veterans and other Americans, this anniversary marks the turning of a long, painful corner. That's Nightly News for Tuesday night. I'm Tom Brokaw. I'll see you tomorrow night. Chandler Jr. Lessel Dunn Jr. Dateline. You make a comfortable living. You're doing all right, but what about your future? You bury your head in the sand and then you won't have to think about it. If you're one of the millions of Americans who put retirement savings... Dead last. It could mean... You are going to have a miserable old age. Are you cheating yourself out of retirement? A Dateline NBC you can't afford to miss tonight. Wake up half a world away with Brian Gumbel and Katie Couric on a week-long African adventure.